Okay, guys, um, this is my predictions for the Strike Force event happening this weekend. It's the heavyweight tournament, as you know. Um, let me first by saying off that I won't be able to put up the video as fast as I'd normally do right after the events. I'm going on vacation in Hawaii, from St. Louis to Hawaii. Um, while I'm there, I'm going to be visiting the BJ Penn Academy and getting some private lessons by J. Penn. Um, learning some new techniques and all. Um, I can't wait. Very excited. I will definitely post videos of the of the training session and my visit to the the Penn Academy. Um, hopefully, I don't think Reagan's going to be there or BJ because I think they're training in California for their um, for each of their both. Both of them have a fight coming up, um, so I won't be. I don't. I'm. I'm almost positive they won't be there, but I'll be training with Jay Penn there, um, learning some new stuff, and I'll definitely post pictures and everything. And don't forget to follow me on uh, on my Twitter account, which will be below here, um, and just follow me and see what's going on with me and while I'm on this trip in Hawaii. Cause I'm trying to do as much MMA possible stuff I can, uh, jiu-jitsu and air boxing, all this other stuff. So uh, let me jump back to the prediction, guys, and. Let's first start off with Feijal versus uh, Yuel uh, Romero. Um, this fight is 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 going to be a good one. Um, I believe both of these guys, um, Feijal especially, you know, he I think he his the fight that he just had he lost against which was um, Dan Henderson. He got. Um, you know he got KO'd in that one, and then you, and and, and his his fighting style is uh, is is pretty, it's pretty well rounded. Um, I mean he's a great jujitsu practitioner. He's underneath Black House, um, underneath that that group, um, and he's just a over well rounded, um, well rounded fighter. Um, his striking ability is there. Um, not it seems like when he goes against another striker it really it really doesn't come together like it normally like it should but for the most part though um his striking ability has a majority of the time one of his fights then you have uh you well your your well which is um he's a pretty decent fighter um but i think in this fight um, he, and he's a well-rounded fighter, also. But I really think that in this fight, um, Fajia was coming in uh, determined, coming off of that loss that he just had, and I think he's just going to come in and dominate the fight and pretty much take it to where he wants to take it, and and, and win the fight in a decisive fashion. I'm going to say that he's going to win this fight by a TKO in the second round. Um, let's go to the next fight, which is King Mo versus Roger Gracie. Roger, well, let's first start with King Mo. King Mo, you know, very cocky guy. Very, you know, um, I'm not going to say cocky. He's just very confident in his skills. Um, excellent wrestler. Um, loves the ground and pound. Um, you know, he's just a, a really excellent guy as far as his wrestling ability. And he really holds on to his wrestling ability as the attribute that he uses the most to win fights. Um, and then you have Roger Gracie, which is a, probably one of the best um, jiu-jitsu practitioners in MMA um, right now. And, and I'm saying that because based on his... Um, just grappling competitions that he's won recently and previously. Um, but with that being said, he's an excellent, excellent jiu-jitsu guy. And, but um, in this fight, what I see happening is I see, you know, uh, King Mo trying to go in there, obviously using his wrestling to take Roger Gracie down. Roger Gracie doesn't make it as... You know, it's not a secret that he's going to try to go after submission after submission after submission to, to submit you. Um, and that's what I see happening. I see, not saying that jiu-jitsu is more superior than wrestling, because I've gotten my tail kicked by wrestlers, and I'm not a wrestler. I use, I'm a jiu-jitsu practitioner. And, 
you know, and, and vice versa. Sometimes you go against wrestlers where you can dominate with the jiu-jitsu. I'm just saying that um, in the stand-up department, King Mo has, has, a, has a, a sizable um, advantage over, over, over Roger Gracie. Roger Gracie is trying to develop his striking. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that there are a lot of things that I've seen with King Mo that are questionable. His gas tank, for one. Um, he tires out and all he's going is for ankles, anything he possibly can. And I just think that Roger Gracie is more hungrier and he's, he's, he's just going to, and he's a excellent, he's just not a mediocre jiu-jitsu guy, he's an excellent jiu-jitsu fighter. And he's just going to overwhelm um, King Mo into to doing something that will get him submitted easily in the world of jiu-jitsu. Instead of, you know, he's going to try to, instead of trying to hold um, Roger Gracie down and do a grounded pound. So I have Roger Gracie winning this fight by uh, submission. Go figure. In the second round. Then we have um, Luke, uh, Luke Rockhold versus uh, Jacare. Um, Luke Rockhold is a guy who's, Another guy who has, a, I think he's like a brown belt in jiu-jitsu and from the Kickbox Academy. Um, his striking, he's trying to develop. Um, his jiu-jitsu is good, is, 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 is good for being, you know, a brown belt. That's excellent. Um, but then you have a guy like, but then you have a guy like, um, like Jocker Ray who basically, who basically is a black belt in jiu-jitsu, uh, I think jiu-jitsu and judo, um, and also he, and also he's an excellent, he's, he's a decent, a pretty good striker. Um, and he's from the Black House, Black House group, you know, Anderson Silva and all this, and, uh, you know, you know the, 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 the house, the, the house of Brazilians that just pretty much dominate. Um, and in this fight, I see both of these guys that kind of have the both same skill set as far as, not skill set, but both, they both do have the same type of disciplines as far as the striking ability and jiu-jitsu. Um, but the difference is, is that of the skill set, uh, Jacare has a better skill set than uh, Luke Rockhold. Luke Rockhold, yes, he, he's, he's good, you know, he's an up-and-coming guy, you know. But Jacare is just that much better than Luke Rockhold. And I just see him going, uh, Jacare going into this fight and really just pushing the pace, pushing, pushing, pushing the pace. And really, um, you know, and, and, and end up going to the third round with, Rock Luko, with Rock, uh, Luke Rockhold and really just um, dominate him in that third round as far as on the ground and holding him there and submitting him. And that's what I believe is going to happen. He's going to submit him in a third round and retain his uh, middleweight championship. And then he'll move on to the next guy. Um, so that. Then we have um, the next fight, which is part of the heavyweight tournament, which is um, Bigfoot Silva versus uh, Dan. Um, uh, Daniel uh, uh, Camaray, uh, I think that's his name. He's a big wrestler guy. Um, on this fight, I kind of went back and forth because, as you know, Alistair Overeem got pulled out of this fight, and I, I mean, everyone, want, everybody wanted to see the fight with these two huge guys in there, and I just really think that this fight really is the better fight because I really, I really had a feeling that. Overeem would lose the fight against Antonio Antonio Silva, uh, Bigfoot Silva. I really just felt that he was going to lose based on his last performance that I saw him against um, Verdun. Um, and and I just feel like um, in this fight, Dan, uh, Daniel has a better better chance at be beating um, Silva. Um, and then Overeem, and that it makes a better fight, and only because of the wrestling pedigree that Daniel, that he brings to the to the table. 
Uh, Daniel is an excellent wrestler. I think he was uh, either um, an alternate in the Olympics or was in the Olympics. I'm not for sure. Uh, you guys can let me know about that. Um, but either way, the guy is an excellent, excellent, excellent wrestler. And he and his last fight that he had, uh, he just dominated the guy with his wrestling, did all types of strikes and whatnot just by taking the guy down and just using his wrestling and pressuring and all that other stuff. And I see him doing that. And not only that, he's a big guy who can move. And wrestling really shows you that, guys. I, I, you see it all the time, these huge behemoth guys who can move um, really fast for their, for their size. You know what I mean? These guys who can shoot. These guys who can, you know, get, you know just, just move out of the way in their huge guys. And wrestling really helps you out with that. Um, not that any other discipline doesn't, but I've really seen it majority of the time with with wrestlers. Just wrestlers, just that are just Brock Lesnar is a is a perfect example. He is a huge guy, but people are like this guy can move. This guy he he shouldn't be able to move this fast. It's that wrestling. Um, but anyway, I have in this fight I have uh, Daniel win in this fight. Um, I say that he's going to move out of the way, use his, um, use his speed, and use his wrestling to really um, keep um, a, a Bigfoot at bay and really use it to kind of, um, you know, win by points. Because that's how I have him win. I have him winning by points. And to, uh, Big, the thing about Bigfoot is Bigfoot will literally, he goes out there and goes against guys, and he kind of does like a, he mauls his opponent as far as how huge he is. And, and, he, and he moves kind of slow, um, but when he grabs you, that's it. When he gets you down, that's it. And guys can't, can't, guys can't overcome that. And I see uh, Daniel overcoming that. He's going to overcome that with his speed and his wrestling skills. So I have him winning the fight. I have Daniel winning the fight by uh, decision. There you go. Advancing. Then we have uh, Josh Barnett versus uh, Sergey. I'm going to chop this guy's name up. Karnatov. Karna, yeah, Karnatov. Um, I'll just say Sergey. But anyway, um, I have this. This fight, you know, everyone knows Josh Barnett is is good at um, as good with his submissions. He has uh, okay uh, striking ability. Sergey is a powerhouse hitter. Um, very good with his submissions, also. Um, but he has never. But he rarely has been submitted, and he's been. And he's rarely been knocked out. Um, but in this circumstance. I see him going against a guy who really loves to go for his submissions. J Josh Barnett will will definitely pop a submission on you before he tries to knock you out. Um, that's just his forte. That's what he loves to do. And I really just, in this fight, I see it going to the second round and Josh Barnett putting on that uh, a guillotine or something like that or catching him in some type of um, arm triangle or something like that. And and tapping out Sergey, um, like I said, I know Sergey hasn't really tapped out much. He'll probably pass out before he taps out, but um, I see that's the way the fight is going to go in this one. And in the end, I think it'll be Josh Barnett versus Daniel uh, Cormier, and and we'll see who I'll, I'll, when, I'll, when that time comes. If those are two guys, I'll do my prediction for those the guys, but. Those are my that's my predictions for the Strike Force uh, heavyweight Grand Grand uh, Prix um, heavyweight tournament. Um, if you guys as normal, if you guys like my review or my pr prediction, sorry, please comment, um, comment, rate, and subscribe. Once again, guys, um, uh, just kind of to hurry up and in the in this in this video, a lot of MMA news has been. Um, coming up, and I'm going to do a separate video on that with the whole uh, GSP and Nick Diaz um, debacle. So, anyway, guys, thanks for watching my video. Peace.